So just like I've been saying for over a year, sell outcomes, not generic AI automations. And people who listen are already making like 10 to 15K a month based off the dozens of emails that I receive every single day. And since now that everyone is finally catching up to this, today I want to share with you guys the current shift that's happening in this space, how I'm going to tackle it, and how you guys can position yourself on the winning side before everyone else figures it out. So you can also make tons of money while others are still chasing trends and shiny ideas. So let's get into it. So the first thing is AI tools are getting easier to use. So automation isn't a flex anymore. And the reality is, guys, it's expected. Two years ago, you could build a generic automation that could take you 20 minutes to build. And business owners would be like, whoa, that's crazy. You can do this? But because now everyone could spend like a week poking around NA10 or make.com and build something. I mean, business owners can already do this and they already do this themselves. It's not as impressive anymore, guys. We already went through the I am impressed phase, okay? Now, business owners and companies don't really care about the, the flashy term AI automation. They understand that AI is just an amplifier. And what really matters is how they can use AI and automation to bring in sales or at least automate 80% of the process, right? So now people who can build automations that are tied to revenue, which means simply automating the biggest bottleneck that every business has at any stage. So whether it's like a startup, mid-size or like enterprise the only thing they care about is lead generation are the people who are gonna dominate this space okay and uh, let me give you guys an example see in 2009 if you showed a business owner that you could build them a website they would be like whoa you know how to do this that's amazing right and they were essentially just hire you because that stuff was very cool back then now every business has a website they don't care that you can build websites right they will ask you will this website actually bring me customers and sales so building this stuff is not impressive anymore only sales results matter so it's interesting because it's kind of like we're living in in the loop, okay? It's kind of like the market repeats itself. And if you really understand this, uh, I'm actually going to explain it. And it's going to turn into like a, it's probably going to tur turn into like a conspiracy theory. It's kind of like you watching those videos that uh, we are, we live in the 90s. Um, so the interesting loop that we are having right now is what happened with websites in 2009 to 2025 is actually happening with automation from 2022 to 2025. So the market goes through predictable phases, which are the scarcity phase, which means few people can actually do the thing. So just having the skill makes you valuable. And then we have the tool explosion phase. New tools come out and suddenly lots of people can do it. And then we have the third phase, which was just recently the everyone can do it phase, the skill becomes common and no longer impressive. And now we are entering in 2026, the results only phase, which means the only thing that matters is whether it gets real business results, which is kind of like an interesting loop. Don't, don't you guys think? It's kind of like the same thing in 2009, right? With websites. Like back then, like if you would build a website in WordPress, like I remember that such good days. But if you could build like a website, like you're like you are the like the nerd like the crazy guy that built stuff and like can change the word but now everyone can like poke around with websites and can build a website hell we even have ai that builds websites for us like ai builders all this crazy stuff so like the same thing is happening we started with the scarcity phase right like uh, make.com these zapier came in around like 2019 okay or like 2018 and then people like like uh, there was a like a very there was very very few people that can actually know how to drag and drop modules and then we had like the tool explosion phase which uh, which was around like 2021 all the way to 2023 and everyone started learning make.com and also na10 okay and now as we enter 2026 the skill becomes common right no longer impressive right so we are living in a loop like i said every time new tag drops for example websites in 2009 ai now there's this short window where just knowing how to use the tool is impressive it. People would just hire you because you get it, right? But then the market matures. So everyone catches up and suddenly the skill that got you in the door means nothing now. Unless, like I said, unless you can tie it to making money. So essentially we go from like, wow, you can do this to like, cool, but does this make me money? Another thing is that the same way you used to get AI automation clients two years ago is debt. Saad, what does that mean? Well, since now we are in the results only phase and the barriers to entry are low, 
what used to work two years ago to get AI on our machine clients does not work anymore. And I mean, think about it. If you go to Upwork slash Fiverr right now, there are hundreds of thousands of freelancers that offer AI automation services for like $5 an hour. And they all use the same tactics. Wink, wink, the loom tactic, which is unfortunate because now we get into another problem, another huge problem, and that's terrifying. And sadly, that's like the nuke that 90% of freelancers are about to face, which is literally not being able to get clients or make a single dollar. Also, platform dependency, which means relying on a platform, which means literally not having a business and a platform that takes a big chunk of your earnings, which is exactly where I was for some contacts. I was an Upwork freelancer um, selling AI and automation systems until I got banned with 2K frozen. But that's besides the point. But um, since now everyone can do this well, the old ways to get clients are completely dead. All right. And another thing is the usual advice from gurus, which is just do the outreach, okay? Just do outreach. Just send 5,000 emails and hope for replies. Spray and pray. Well, guys, this used to work two years ago. Now, if you do this, you're going to lose all your email infrastructure, you're landing in spam, and people can't even see your email or outreach message. So you're just going to, like, annoy people. What now works is... A strategic targeting, which means finding people or businesses that already spend in money on whatever you are selling and positioning yourself as a better alternative rather than just spamming people. Because, guys, you can't create demand from nothing. It's not SMMA in 2016, okay? So people got over it. You need to position yourself as a better alternative to what they are already buying. Instead of like blasting 5,000 emails and hoping something clicks, you want to flip it. You want to go for fewer high quality leads that actually need what you're offering. Okay. But here's the difference. You're not just sending emails. You're building a repeatable system, which means you test one angle, one niche, one offer on a tight, small batch, meaning 300 to 400 leads, then tweak and repeat. Over time, you actually start seeing what gets replies, what books meetings, and why. And that's how you scale. Now, when you go deep into this, and this is what I've done for the past two years, which made me build a business that consistently makes 165K a month, is finding something that no one does. Something that allowed me to cut down costs and scale in a way that nobody in the market has ever seen. Nobody in the AI and automation space, which is something that I like to call the connector angle, which means you are the deal maker, not the delivery boy. Think about it like an agent in Hollywood. They connect valuable people or offers with the right buyers at the right time. You're out in the market free hunting and bringing them deals. And the way it works is that you have your own email infrastructure that you use both for getting yourself clients and for making connections for your existing clients. Now, this positioning makes you perceived as high leverage operator, not a vendor, right? A partner, not a service provider and independent, not dependent. So you run the infrastructure, they get the intros and you get paid. That's it. This isn't traditional lead generation where you're like managing their campaigns, okay? This is a systematic client acquisition method where you control the process and deliver the outcomes, okay? So in closing, I want you guys to really pay attention to this because this is the same cycle that happened with websites 15 years ago. And people who noticed the shift early, who moved from I can build websites to I can get you customers through websites, we're the ones who built last in million dollar businesses. And the same opportunity exists now in the AI and automation space. The window is open, but it won't be for long, okay? Because the edge isn't building automations anymore. It's knowing who needs them, why, and how to connect the dots in a way that actually makes money. So guys, make sure to prepare for this. And this is like a classic um, example of what I like to call the mythic success in real time, which is basically like an idea that I'm developing in a book, a book it's called Reflections on Mythical Success. And essentially, like I found like a formula, which is like, if you really want to get successful in this AI and automation space, or like any business in general, this applies to any business, you need timing times leverage times distribution times narrative plus work, plus luck, times exposure, plus avoided self-sabotage. Okay, so I've studied all these like um, successful people like Alex Hormozzi, um, 
Naval, all these crazy people. And you can definitely take some golden nuggets from the way they got successful and make sense of money in the AI automation space. Okay, and let me just give you like a brief TLDR. Now, most people in the AI space, like they look at AI, right? And they say, oh, well, cool technology, but you want to be a mythic thinker, okay? That sees the, like the sees the formula. Because we have timing, all right? We have the results phase that, that I just talked about now. And then we have leverage. You can essentially just learn NA10 and build systems that get you clients while you sleep, okay? And then we have distribution, which is which means like finding businesses bleeding money on client acquisition, aka every business. And then narrative. The narrative is where it, it, it gets interesting. It's basically like your positioning, where you cut through the noise and don't become like a copycat, just like an AI, like a generic AI automation or like lead gen agency. So you want to say, I solve expensive problems, not I build cool tech. So that's a good narrative to be in. And then the work, okay, which is the right work at the right time, because it becomes now exponential. And then the luck times exposure. So you want to put yourself where opportunities lives, okay, which is systematic outreach. You need to be reaching out to people in a way that's systematic, not spray and pray. And then you want to avoid self-sabotage. You don't want to talk to yourself out of the biggest wealth transfer of the decade, okay? So never do that. Like all this anxiety, limiting beliefs, just discard them because you're good to go. So if you apply this formula, there is no way you won't achieve financial freedom or location freedom, whatever you want in life. Okay. So as always, get out there, take action. I believe in you and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.